Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 4. So we're going to be breaking down the new photos and the new synopsis for this episode and the next episode, and there's some crazy stuff in it. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. We have two synopsis to go over, that being Episode 4 and Episode 5 of Season 6. Also, we got photos and a lot of photos in episode 4 of season 6. So that is not this week's episode, but the week after. Okay, so the first photo you see is on the screen right here. You see they're outside in the Phantom Zone. You know that they're outside and probably not in the cave because you can see the moonlight on Kara's hair and also this other character's hair. Now, who is this other character? Well, this other character is who was just revealed in the casting notes the other day. That being Peter Sargent as Nixley. Now, I'm not sure if I'm saying Nixley right. However, that is how I presume we actually say it. But she is going to be Kara's new friend. They meet inside the Phantom Zone, as you can see in this photo. And like a bunch of other photos. So she's going to be playing a prominent role in this episode. And so she is the wife of Mr. Mixus Pidalik in the comics. So she is a fifth dimensional imp. Okay, so that's kind of what you need to know in regards to her character, and we're going to be talking about her a bit in this video. So you see her right here, and it seems like she has just met Kara and Zorel for the first time. And so they're outside in the Phantom Zone. You cut to this next photo, you see them both outside. This is 100% outside. So I'm wondering, why aren't the Phantoms after them? Has she got like some sort of device or some sort of way to defer the Phantoms? That's what I'm curious about because, you know, every time they've escaped from the cave and they've gone outside, they've been attacked by phantoms, essentially. So, yeah. Well, you got Kara and Zorel here, and I've been loving the dynamic, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this next episode and, you know, how this whole Phantom Zone storyline is going to play out. Okay, so let's move back to Earth, and we have Alex right here, suited up, and we've got Brainy and Jean. And they're looking at the computer, I'm presuming they're trying to track something down. And so it must be noted, this is episode 4 photos, so I did go over episode 3 photos the other day. However, they're very similar, and it looks like episode 3 and 4 is basically just going to be a continuation of the story. Because you see a lot of very similar photos in very similar locations and spots. So if you guys are a bit confused, don't worry, I was a bit confused as well, because it all looks very similar. Okay, so we go over again in the tower and we have Megan and Jean and we know in the episode before the Phantoms attack, so that is this week's episode, the Phantoms are going to attack in the tower. So it seems like they're able to defeat them and then in this episode they're just back to normal. So you see this next photo, you got Lena and Alex right here, they're standing and then they go to this iced up place. I'm not sure specifically where it is. But it does have like a washroom sign in the background, so I'm presuming it's like some sort of company building that has been attacked, and I'm presuming it's kind of like a Frost villain, maybe. So it's not going to be like Killer Frost or something, but it might be someone with Frost-like powers, I guess. So we go to the next shot in the same place. You see icicles everywhere, and everything is frozen, and things have been destroyed. So I don't know specifically who this is, but it's some sort of villain. I'm presuming it's probably not the Phantoms because they haven't shown any power similar to this yet. But yeah, you have Brainy right here. He's about to shoot whatever is coming his way and also Nia is reacting as well. Back to the Phantom Zone. Well, it seems like they've actually got themselves a ship. So I'm presuming Nixley has some sort of transport device. So yeah, you got zor in this photo. He's inside that ship. You cut to a wider shot and you got everyone here. You got Nixley and you have Supergirl. And it seems like they're either looking at something on a screen or like outside, maybe there's a window, or they are talking to someone else. Now that would be curious, but it does seem like they have definitely found a place where they might be able to escape from. And we're going to go over the synopsis for this episode in a minute, but it does note that Supergirl finds an opportunity to escape from the Phantom Zone, and so it comes with dangerous strings attached. I'm presuming this is what they're talking about right here. Okay, so yeah, this cool photo, you got Kara talking to zor and Nixley is in the background. And we go back to Earth, and we have this continuation. This is where I said I was a bit confused, because the episode 3 photos and trailer show that Megan is down on this table. 
and it seems like maybe the Phantom has taken her over. So is she like wiped out for the whole of episode 3, then in episode 4 she's in the exact same position? So I don't know if like the CW has messed up the order of the photos and they released some for the wrong episode, but it's very likely that she is wiped out for the whole of episode 3 and she wakes up in episode 4. So we got a shot of Brainy and John and they are listening to what I presume is the rest of Team Supergirl, probably Alex. And we have this photo right here of Nixley and Kara and they're facing like directly into the camera. So are they talking to Zor-El or are they talking to the screen that I theorize about? Like have they found some sort of way of communicating with other people? So we'll have to wait and see until the episode. But we go over to the next shot. We have Supergirl right here talking to Nixley. And they're going to have quite a lot of stuff in this episode. And then we move on to the final photo. And this is what I'm saying again. She's in the exact same position that being Magan inside the tower. And she's on this like sort of surveillance bench. And they're looking at like the stats on the screen. I'm presuming it's like oh you're fine now and you don't have the phantom with inside of you or something along those lines but anyway let's move on to the synopsis we obviously talked about quite a lot of the plot in episode 4 now let's move on to the synopsis that confirms some of the stuff that we've been talking about so Supergirl finds a way home this episode is titled Lost Souls obviously a reference to Kara being lost and to Nixley and Zor-El being lost inside the phantom zone so it says Supergirl finds a way home Supergirl finds an opportunity to escape from the Phantom Zone, but it comes with some dangerous strings attached. Meanwhile, Lena joins the Super Friends on a mission, but she finds she disagrees with their plan of action against the Phantoms and wonders if she truly is ready to be a part of the team. So it looks like in this episode, Lena is going to be the humanity of the episode, because as you have seen over the last few episodes, well, last episode specifically, Jean and Alex have been really desperate and they haven't been making the best calls because they are so connected to Kara and they want her back so badly. And so I think what Lena is doing, because Lena's extremely smart and she's definitely the smartest out of them, you know, maybe Brainy is as smart. However, you know, she's going to be like, I disagree with your plan of action because this probably isn't the best way to stop the Phantoms and she probably has something better in mind. So looking forward to seeing how Lena plays into Team Supergirl and like it says, she wonders if she is truly ready to be a part of the team and that is going to be explored in this episode. And also, Supergirl finds the opportunity to escape from the Phantom Zone. Is it likely? Probably not. She's probably not going to escape. But let's move on to the next thing. And this is the synopsis for the Midvale two-part episode. The first part, which is episode 5, is titled Prom Night. And episode 6, the second part, is titled Prom Again. So we have the synopsis for the first part. And it's really, really interesting. And it teases something huge that I don't think Supergirl has literally ever done before. It's a very Flash thing. Okay, so the flashback to Midvale introduces a young Cat Grant. This is how the synopsis goes. Neo and Brainy attempt to save Supergirl from the Phantom Zone, so she definitely doesn't escape in episode 4, by time traveling back to Kara's home in 2009. What? Okay, let's continue and then we'll break that down and freak out about time travel. While determined to secure the item needed to help Supergirl, Brainy is worried about keeping a low profile to not alter the future timeline. However, when their ship crashes upon arrival, a young Kara Danvers, played by Isabella Vidovic, is the first on the scene. Meanwhile, a young reporter named Kat Grant sets her sights on Midvale as she suspects there is a big story in the small town. So Kat Grant has been played by Eliza Helm, who is going to be a young version of Kat. Okay, so there is so much to break down and freak out about in this synopsis. I'm really, really excited for this episode. Supergirl and Melissa aren't going to be in this episode. I believe you might get like one scene or so. It's more about young Kara and Alex. However, Team Supergirl is going to be mixed in in it because, as it's revealed in the synopsis, Neo and Brainy attempt to save Supergirl from the Phantom Zone by time traveling back to Kara's home in 2009. Wow. So that is super exciting. I don't think Supergirl has ever time traveled before. Like, maybe they did it once, but I kind of forgot about it. So this is definitely something Supergirl doesn't do often. That's my main point. 
this is something that The Flash does all the time. Like, time travel is a huge thing on The Flash. So it's really exciting to see that Supergirl is delving into the realms of time travel because it's always exciting going back and linking these different time periods to what's happening in the present. And so it's great to see that young Kara and Alex are probably going to interact with Nia and Brainy. So they time travel back to 2009 to Kara's home, that being Midvale. So that's why the episodes are all about the prom because they're going to be having a prom and it's going to be mainly about young Kara and Alex's life whilst Brainy and Nia are there kind of snooping around trying to get this one item. So at the same time, Brainy is extremely worried about keeping a low profile so they don't alter the future timeline. And that is a big thing in time travel and especially a big thing in the shows because if you mess up something in the past, it messes up the future. So basically what they're doing in the past is they're trying to get this item. And I think this item is going to somehow lead to Kara in the future, probably not ending up in the Phantom Zone. So I think this is definitely the riskiest plan that they could have come up with. However, they are very desperate to get Supergirl back. So maybe they've approved it, like the whole team. Or maybe Neo and Brainy came up with this idea and they were like, okay, we're just going to go. Like, let's not tell Jean or Alex or anything. And so I'm super excited to see what goes on with the time travel stuff. However, it comes with a twist because they crash on arrival, right? In 2009, in Midvale, they crash and young Kara Danvers finds them on the scene. So, this is crazy. Has young Kara in the past seen Nia and Brainy and has she been hiding it this whole time? Or is this a new future timeline where they've altered it because young Kara has seen them and now she has them sort of in the back of her mind this whole time? So that's definitely going to be something interesting to explore. Also at the same time you have a young Cat Grant who is showing up. Excited to see a version of Cat showing up even if it isn't close to Flockhart. I think the big deal here is the big story that the synopsis talks about is probably the ship crash. However, it could be something else that is just my presumption right now. And this is probably going to be like the first time young Kara interacts with Kakaron and she eventually aspires to be like her leading to season one. So I think this is a great kind of wrap up story where you're going to see young Kara and Alex probably for the last time in these two episodes. And this is the last time you're probably going to see Kat Grant in any version. Yes, it's not the normal version, but it's a flashback version. That's cool. And it's going to kind of complete the arc of like how Kara eventually ended up at Katko meeting Kat Grant and being the person she is today. So I'm a big fan of this and I can't wait to explore the storyline, but also the time travel stuff really interests me. So let me know down in the comments down below, what do you guys think about all of this? Some crazy stuff happening in the next few episodes of Supergirl. So remember this week we have episode three titled Phantom Menaces. Then we have what we were talking about in this episode, Lost Souls, that was the photos and Kara trying to escape the Phantom Zone with Zorel and Nixley. Then the week after, we have the first episode of the two-part episode, episode five and six, Prom Night and Prom Again. So get ready, guys. But for now, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications if you enjoy the video so you don't miss any future videos. Obviously, we upload daily to do with Supergirl, The Flash, Superman Lois. Superman Lois is coming back after Supergirl ends. The Flash is on a break after this week, so it's going to be purely Supergirl reviews. However, we always do daily videos no matter if the shows are on or off, so please be sure to stay active. And for now, click on my latest videos that are popping up on the screen right here. Here's my latest Supergirl video, so go watch that. And I will catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.